It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. It always protects. It always protects. It always protects. Love never fails. I don't have enough time to read it for you today. It's a little bit too long. Your homework is to go and read 2 Corinthians chapter 20. I'm sorry, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It's the story of a king by the name of Jehoshaphat. And the people of God were at war. They were surrounded by their enemies. Just like we are today. We are surrounded by our enemies. Those that would like to make us subservient. Slaves even. Servants of a government, of an ideology that's foreign to our spirits and foreign to our souls. We are at war. We did not start this war. We did not fire the first shot. But we will finish this war by whatever it takes and we will be victorious. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, King Jehoshaphat and his counselors understood that the enemy had them surrounded. That their liberty was under assault that they could be taken into servitude, into slavery. Their sovereignty was going to be lost. So King Jehoshaphat got together with his counselors, the prophets, the men of God. They sought the wisdom and the will of the Most High God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They wanted the Holy Spirit to speak to them. And once they heard from the, from the voice of the Lord, they then lined up to march out and face the enemy. Do you hear me? They lined up to march out and face the enemy. Now the instructions from the Most High was that, believe it or not, the praise and worshipers, the choir was going to go first. Not the artillery, not the cavalry, not the infantry. The first ones in line were the praise and worshipers. And although the Lord had promised them the battle was theirs and they were going to win, they still had to line up and confront the enemy. They still had to go out and take up battle positions. They had to begin to march. But the Word of God says that as they begin to march out praising God, you hear me? You're listening close. I can't hear you. Are you hearing me? That as they marched out, beginning to praise God, it threw the enemy into chaos and confusion and they began battling themselves and they killed themselves. I can't get no amen out here. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Bible then says, in their victory, they never had to fire a shot. They never had to engage in warfare. Not physical warfare. The enemy killed themselves. The Bible concludes, the story concludes by saying, then they, the people of God, plundered their enemies. Plundered them. They were just dead. They come, across, they come over the hill and the enemy is dead. And it started off by understanding that victory begins by praising God. By doing it not for your own self-centeredness. Not doing it for your own self-centeredness. Not doing it because you're ticked off because somebody did you wrong. You do it because you understand that liberty is under assault and you do it for your fellow citizens. You do it for those... Come on now. You do it willing to shed blood if you must. The Lord Jesus shed his blood first for you to have the liberties that you supposedly are supposed to enjoy. You do it for his glory 
first. Are y'all hearing me? Today, when you take up positions and you go march out to face the enemy, you do it believing that the hand of God is with you. You do it believing that the grace of God is with you. You do it with your mind on the mission of God. You do it with praise in your heart. Believing that the enemy is going to turn on themselves. That your enemies that wish to rob you of your liberty, your right to protect yourself as commanded by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. What did he tell you? Go get some arms and protect yourself. Go get some arms and protect yourself. From the Lord Jesus himself. You are not meant to be slaves of anyone. The great story of Moses is the deliverance of his people from servitude, from slavery, from Pharaoh, from the government. He demanded it. Give us our liberty may, so that we may, may worship as we wish. You are commanded in God's word to be a slave of no one. You are commanded to be free. It is a command for you to live in servitude is a sin, a transgression against God's law. Whether it begins today with our meager numbers, understand that we have power, that we are in the right. It's not a, mid, a matter of our, of our mere constitutional rights. It's, it's our God-given rights. What we're doing, what we're doing is something holy. When you march with your arms today, you are doing something that is holy. You should be a little nervous. <laughs> You're about to do the work of the Lord. You should be just a little bit nervous. When you do something holy, there should be some butterflies. When you're doing something holy that the enemy doesn't like, yes, there's a risk that you take. And you embrace it. Go out today, face the enemy with praise in your heart. Believing the enemy is going to ambush itself. The victory is ultimately ours. Let's pray. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the command and the instructions to protect ourselves. We thank you for a constitution, both of America and of Texas, that was born from your holy word. We thank you, Lord, that as we march today, with you on our minds and praise in our heart, the enemy shall be vanquished. That we shall have the victory, we shall gain the plunder. Liberty shall be revived in the state. Constitutionally constrained government shall be resurrected in this state. We praise you and we worship you. And our belief is that you're going to show the planet, your creation, that Texas is where you rule, you reign, and your spirit is in abundance. We call upon your blessings. We ask for your guidance. We call upon your protection. And it's in your name, Lord Jesus, that we pray. Amen. 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 Not sure how you follow that. Well, that was pretty good stuff right there. Yeah. I tell you what, Heidi, are you ready? I am. <laughs> Listen, guys. <laughs> Listen, guys. Uh, Claver and, and, and I've been friends for a little while. We met in the uh, Liberty Movement. Um, I also made a, a good friend with uh, Daniel Miller in the Liberty Movement, and the two of them became friends. And through them, I met Heidi Teese and was fortunate enough to interview her when she was running for state. Uh, was rep. it rep? Mm -hmm. State rep. And I was really impressed. Heidi, you've got a military background. I do. And Six years U.S. Army. Hua. Whoa. <laughs> In addition to that, um, you're, you're a gun dealer. 
I am. I'm a firearms dealer. And you are currently sitting uh, city council. I'm on city council at League City. Are you just running through my resume now? <laughs> well, more or less, the, the work you, you you guys at, at, in League City actually passed a resolution that was very impressive. You mind sharing uh, basically what that resolution said? I, I do actually, and I'm going to read to you a few words that I wrote to exhort other local government officials to take the same action. Because a lot of them would push back and they would say, why would we have to make a statement on what is a constitutional right? A lot of them said, that's way above our pay grade. City council and county government says that's above our pay grade. That's something for the congressmen and the senators to deal with. And so I wrote something to exhort them to go back and remember their oath of service. I'm on city council. I ran for state rep and did not make it through the primary. Um, and everything I say and do on Raging Elephants Radio is probably meant to make sure I'll never get elected for anything else again. <laughs> uh, because I would, um, I, I would, there are no holds barred when it comes to this issue. So I wanted to read to you what I wrote to other city council members and uh, and county commissioners to encourage them to take the same action to protect your Second Amendment rights that we took in League City. So I'm going to tell you something you guys already know. You're not going to, you're, what you're going to hear from me is a reminder to your elected officials of their oath. You guys already know this. That's why you're here today. The fundamental principle behind the Second Amendment is actually pretty simple. It is the duty of the people to preserve liberty, and to do so, they must keep and bear arms. Many politicians say they support the Second Amendment for hunters and sportsmen and personal protection. That is rhetorical nonsense and has absolutely nothing to do with the purpose of the Second Amendment. The true intent is to protect the citizens from tyranny to keep us from becoming enslaved to a central government, to keep the national government from levying and enforcing unjust, unconstitutional, and oppressive laws, and to preserve liberty and protect our constitutional republic from men who act to infringe upon our liberty. Let me remind you of these words from Patrick Henry, that he who said, give me liberty or give me death, he said in 1788, guard with jealous attention the public liberty. Suspect everyone who approaches that jewel. Unfortunately, nothing will preserve it but downright force. Whenever you give up that force, you are inevitably ruined. Folks, tyranny will reign when a central power determines that a free people are dangerous. That is when patriots become enemies of the state. And a move to disarm a free people is the first act of oppression. <laughs> Folks, I want to remind you of what Noah Webster said when he um, wanted to protect everyday people, and he compared it to a military force, and this is why. Noah Webster said this uh, when he was talking about the leading principles of the federal constitution in 1787. He said, a source of power in government is military force, but this, to be efficient, must be superior to any force that exists among the people or which they cannot command, or which they can command, for otherwise this force would be annihilated on the first exercise of an act of oppression. Before a standing army can rule, the people must be disarmed, as they are in almost every kingdom in Europe today. This he said back in 1787, and it stands true today. The supreme power in America cannot enforce unjust laws by the sword because the whole body of the people are armed and constitutes a force superior to any band of regular troops that can be on any pretense raised in the United States. Are you hearing what he's saying? We, the people, are a greater force than any standing army, including our own, of which I was one. <laughs> a military force at the command of Congress can execute no laws but such as the people.
perceive to be just and constitutional. For they, we, possess the power and jealously will instantly inspire the inclination to resist the execution of a law which appears to them unjust and oppressive. You are here because you have heard a call to action to protect the fundamental right, the Second Amendment right, which upholds all the others. We will resist any movement to infringe upon our rights, and we will go even further, and we will shame our politicians into upholding the very oath that they swore to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Texas State Constitution. God bless Texas and all for Texas. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heidi. Listen, guys, um, before we bring um, Brian Smith up, we have Christy Fusilier here. I'd like to make a quick announcement. Tell us what you're doing out here. We're down at Gander Mountain.